<laughs> this is progress right here. <laughs> oh, okay. Nah, let's talk about that for a second. Y'all, not only is it Black History Month, but it is also the week of love. And as Valentine's Day is around the corner, I wanted to make sure to show some love to one of my amazing queens, Ro. Ro is an accountant and business consultant, a primary caretaker for her family, and through her program has become a great friend. So if you need your taxes done and want to make sure your business is running smoothly, she's your girl. I'm so excited for you to hear from Ro. So let's dive into the episode. Hey, Ro. So glad to have you on this episode. How you doing, girl? I'm good. What's going on, Coach G? You know, just excited to have you here. I already gave like a little intro, but like, you know, go ahead and tell people who you are, what you do, um, and how we got here. OMG. Okay. So I'm Ro. Um, I'm an accountant by trade. I um, have a business um, administration degree or whatever and management. So one of the things that I really like to do is business consulting. I love diving into small businesses and really, and I won't even just scale it, but just look, diving into businesses, figuring out like ways that they can improve, streamline processes, et cetera. So yeah. Um, that's the heart of my consulting piece. I definitely love numbers. And so, um, that's how I wound up in accounting instead of just full-time business consulting. So right. I've been doing accounting for 20 plus years. I don't look like it, but. Don't, you know, um, black don't crack, period. Just not at all. So, um, how we got here, Lord. So we were, we served together at church and got to talking about like the struggles that I was having with my weight. Mm-hmm. and other things and so coach g just decided hey let me take you on in my program let me show you how to how this works and through it all we have like the ups and downs of it she's getting to see the the other side of me <laughs> <laughs> through the process but i'm starting to, i'm definitely understanding myself better along the way with my body so um I'm just dope, and I, I think it's a dope process, and I'm excited to to share with the you know the masses on this. Right, right. I love that. I love that for you. Yeah, you better than numbers than I am because they suck. Um, I, I, I suck at numbers. I mean, they don't lie. That's the thing about this numbers. True. This is true, right? And I think one thing that was from a coach standpoint, I think an interesting thing like that we had overcome that like I think especially as an accountant like numbers is like your thing so like you're looking at the scale like this number needs to number the way I want it to number you're used to controlling numbers (laughs) but um but like you say numbers don't lie but it's like what are the numbers really telling us right like what are they really saying right and I think learning the language of numbers when it comes to fitness was something that (laughs) was beautiful to watch you understand but what would you say is like the like whether it was like in that moment that we met or like before then what would you say was like the turning point or the thing that happened that really like made you be like all right bro like I need to get my stuff together I need to get my life together you know what it was actually watching you what yeah because when we first started talking about this we were just talking about me like chiming in on your business and like giving you some pointers and stuff right, and then being a business consultant <laughs> right right and then we started I, I think you looked at it probably I, I'm just kind of assuming but it was almost like you were like hold on well maybe we need to work on this and so together let me let me see can I motivate her this way and you said I will do this program too at the same time and then when I looked at like the time frame and your results versus my results not comparing us but the comparing the results from the time frame your consistency and then looking at like well hold on it would just be times that we'll be serving and I'm like dang does this look like she you know like <laughs> I'm looking at myself like, well, what is the difference? I know what the difference is. One, you know, it's my t- nutrition. And then two, the consistency. Like that's been like my Achilles heel or was, I'm going to say was, because we're not claiming that for like, period. but that was the thing that was like the turning point. And I was like, dang, okay. 
if we've been doing this on the same time frame, like I should have some more visible results for myself. Mm-hmm. And that's provided that I'm doing what you're doing and following along properly. So that that will be what I said was like the turning point for me and looking at it and saying, okay, I got to like step this up. I got to change the way I'm viewing the program, yeah. viewing myself, the food, the, the nutrition thing is like, I didn't want to accept that <laughs> I got to deal with these nutrition numbers. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if y'all are just listening to audio, y'all did not see Rose's face. I love it. Right, and I'm a very, my facial expressions will speak way louder than my voice. Okay. <laughs> my voice. But it was just one of those like, okay, now I got to count these things. I love counting, but now I'm like the protein thing. And then also the, the, um, figuring out, you know, my eating lifestyle changing as it was morphing throughout the process. So I feel like I've landed in that I have really cut out um, the fish mm-hmm. um, and really now digging into some of these vegan options that can help me have protein instead right. of trying to like lean on fish here and there. And I feel like I was kind of cheating on myself with that. So yeah, yeah. Like, for context for y'all listening so uh ro started her journey like initially like pescatarian and like figuring out from there um but had and based on what she needed her gut and other things she decided to become like vegan vegetarian and like one of our biggest struggles was finding protein and getting enough protein in while living the vegan vegetarian lifestyle so what would you say was like one of your favorite hacks of getting in that protein living a vegan vegetarian lifestyle for them girls out there who are trying to work out trying to get that pump in but they're vegan vegetarian are like i'm i'm feeling tired i'm feeling overwhelmed like i don't know how to do it so my my favorite hack is the mushroom walnut or pecan meat that to me goes a lot of ways. You can actually make it into sausage patties. You can make it into meatballs. You can also do it. And I love um, like Mexican food or whatever. So I love to make some girl Frito pies, nachos, um, chili, you know, those things go a long way. And one of the things that I picked up here along the way is lentils. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely do check chickpeas. I have this African dish that I like to make with fava beans and chickpeas that, um, and it's really simple. It's literally the beans, tomatoes, um, onions, and garlic. And then you, when you get it all sauteed and seasoned up and like smushed and all that good stuff, kind of making them like a curry, then you can pop it with some fresh, um, you know, tomatoes and a um, little olive oil and some eggs and some fresh cut onions or whatever. But that's been the biggest thing. Like, and then oh, I'll take that back too. On top of that, well, that has been big with the big the beans. But the other thing is the mushrooms. And so I saw you. I was telling you about how I don't know this mindset thing was telling me that I couldn't really like. Why can't I go and get the oyster mushrooms and the lion's mane? Right, I, I, right. Street at the farmers market, and so boom, there we are now with that. But I, I've been checking out IG and Pinterest and figuring out different, you know. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a, a wealth of them out there. So you can right. always go out there and find you something. Right. Right. Yeah. If y'all were ever on my Instagram and you heard this voiceover where I was talking about mushrooms, it's because I was talking to Ro. Because <laughs> I don't like mushrooms, but Ro can take mushrooms and make them be like meat literally like make them so good so delicious um but I really love that not only did you literally give them a whole recipe like period but definitely like use your resources right like Pinterest is one of my favorite sources of finding recipes and things like that especially like for the girls out there who are like busy right like you could probably find super nice like quick easy vegan vegetarian meals on there if you need it um to be able to achieve your goals for sure um I really also want to commend you and show love to the fact that like you still eat what you like right so you mentioned like you love Mexican food you love like making food you want and you made nachos right like the way you like it right and a lot of people 
would like cut out like all the food that they like and create like whole new random dishes trying to be healthy instead of just recreating what's already there. So like, what if I told you I could give you the secrets to being fit and fine forever? Well, girl, I got you. Brick Union Headquarters is the healthiest and the most empowering community in black girl fitness, period. And you'll get access to exclusive videos, priority access to events, and so much more. So all you have to do is watch, apply, and get fine. Sounds good, right? Then visit patreon.com slash cqhq or click the link in the description below. Either way, don't miss out on an opportunity to change your life. I know you had mentioned the mindset thing earlier. Like, do you think like you struggled with that at any point? Do you like, and if you did, what got you from like struggling with that to being able to, what was the light bulb for real that got you to be like, oh, let me just do this real quick. You know what? Um, yes, I did struggle and I still struggle. I'm not even on front. You know, I still have my struggles. It's not um, as it was in the beginning. It was about the change. And I, also part of the, the help now is that we're going through the series at church, the <laughs> shameless plug, but breaking the cycles. Like, and, and it is what it is, right? So yeah. um, in that struggle, it was about me letting go of my old self. And I think I struggle mentally with mourning that. Um, and, and that not necessarily just included my fitness, but it was just like old habits, things that I thought brought me pleasure that really didn't. Mm -hmm. um, and then regaining the love for the things that I love, to, that I like to do that are healthy, like skating. I love skating. Right. Why haven't I been going skating? I used to do it like two or three times a week. What mm -hmm. happened? Yeah. So, you know, the pandemic is no longer an excuse. And that was the yeah. other thing. Rid of those excuses. Yeah. In a light bulb moment, I what I was thinking was like, okay, hold on. I know that I can change my body in in 90 days. And really there's anything you want to do 90 days, you know, 30, okay. 60, 90. You know, you 30, you're observing in the 60 days, you're um basically coming up with a plan to adjust whatever it is that you observed mm -hmm. and in 90 in the 90 days or that third um set of 30 days you're executing mm -hmm. your plan and then you go back and readjust accordingly so yeah. I, me knowing that and that's how i operate in business why isn't that i'm not doing this in my personal life mm -hmm. um i had to take it and apply it you know yeah. that way. and so I, when i was thinking about there it's like hold on um if I start in March, what's this March? Okay, so by June, you ready? Okay, yeah. Don't don't judge me, judge your mama. But <laughs> um, I, I was just thinking about it, like, why? If I stick to it, it's okay that. It, so what's working for me right now is that I think about it. It's okay to forego those sweets because I'm a sweet. I'm a sweet girl. I love my sweets. Yeah. But I can forego those for, um, you know, 90 days. And I tell myself in increments of 30, if I just do it for this first month, boom. And what I'm noticing that if you start breaking it down and say, okay, if I don't do it, it you you promise yourself that you're not going to make, um, you're going to stick stay away from the sweets for 30 days. And then you tell yourself every day is for today. Mm. And I'm going to do it for the week. You know what I mean? Like the goal is for the week. And then you remind yourself daily is for today. Right. And if you break it down into smaller increments, mm -hmm. then you're not feeling so overwhelmed about the bigger picture when the bigger picture gets filled in as you do the little things every day. Right, right. So that's how I've mastered my mindset. Period. Have y'all mastered the mindset? Because once you do that, the rest just follows. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me get my cup. Yeah. Okay. This man this is progress right here <laughs> oh okay nah let's talk about that for a second right um y'all need to know one of the most major wins for Ro, and i'm so happy to see it because what it was what two years in the making yeah and ultimately yeah when i think yeah. about it and i say two years just and that's mainly because I took time off work and then it was going through the process with surgeries and all that or whatever. But, you know, when I look at it, it's like, ah, okay, that was 22. 
Right. We're not taking this into a whole, you know, so technically a year, but it's been like two years yeah. since I've been on the nine to five. Yes. So, yeah, my plan when I took off on the nine to five was to start the process. <laughs> right. And it's been like a, it's been like caterpillar snow. <laughs> hey. However, house and ever, as my friend would say, um, I was trying to, my, my goal was to get all of my documents, like, organized and, and filed properly. And um, I knew that would set the tone for the next level in my business. Right. And, you know, when it, we, you know, we talked about mindset, the struggle comes in with the enemy talking to you and telling you like, you can't do that. Your family, who, who's the entrepreneur around you? Who's the, you know, right. are you going to be greater than those that, that were before you mm. or, you know, is the greatness that you have right now enough? Mm. Like, for a while, I believe that that was okay. Like, I'm, I'm doing better than all of them, so why do I need to? Right. And, you know, at the point right now, I'm not having kids, so it was like, well, it's just me. Right. But then, not true, because it's really not just me. I have, you know, cousins whose kids look at me as their aunt, um, even cousins that look at me as, as, you know, they're looking at me as big cousin and um, as a resource and as an example. So I really don't have just me to look after. So that was like motivation. But in the midst of it, I was also dealing with my spiritual struggles of yeah, um, hearing these negative, you know, iterations about me not being enough or um, mm -hmm. worthy of what God has for me. And so um, I made my goal was to do it before the end of the year. It doesn't matter. I got it done before. Mm -hmm. the and that's what I'm proud of. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I'm not, I, I, I do, I hear the voices, but yeah. I combat that with the word of God. So Period. yeah, that's yeah. how I, I'm managing yeah, for context, like Rose, uh, environment <laughs> was a, was uh something. It was, it was a lot. Field, let me say that. <laughs> it was literally like, her office boy, you could not see the floor. You didn't know what was what. Stacks of stuff everywhere, and you, it literally was a reflection of like how you were inside your brain. Uh -huh. And what was it in January? At, at the time of this recording, like January ain't even over yet. And she, what, it took you like a day or two? Yeah, when I looked at it, I was like, whoa, I started on the 18th and I finished on 20th. It what? took a few days to complete something that she's been holding off on for at least a year. Okay, come on, children of Israel. In the wilderness. <laughs> okay. When y'all only had like a few weeks of a trip or a couple of months, however, the, the, I, you know, <laughs> on foot. Man. So I, I did feel that and I was like, we're not gonna do this. This yeah. is coming in the 24. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, you know, scattered mindset. And really, the thing is, the perfectionist in me mm. wanted to make sure that I had all the receipts. So I had bags and bags of receipts, you know. Yeah. I had all these little gadgets and stuff that people have given me. And I'll, oh, I'll save this little fidget spin. I'm gonna give it to such and such. That kid is 12, baby. She's not, you know, she's she okay. Need to I don't want the fidget spinner. She wants something else. <laughs> right. Right. No, that's great. That's great. But I like to, I want to sit there for a second because I think a lot of the time, like whether it's in your fitness journey or anything else, like we tend to like make it a lot bigger than what it is. You know, like the ocean example I gave the other day, like when you finally decided to tackle it, first of all, you made the decision, Right. And that was the hardest part. It <laughs> was making the decision. But once you did, the thing that you've been festering, like you got it done and achieved your goal in a shorter time than it took you to worry about it. You know? Oh. So it's like, whatever, like whoever's listening, whatever you are holding back on, whatever you're afraid to do, whatever, like you think, like you don't have the capability to do or you're afraid too much you make all these excuses as to like why you don't have the time to do it. Trust me. It's probably not nearly as big as you think it is. Um, but I want to like backtrack a little bit as to something you said earlier. And honestly, something you kind of mentioned in this time too, when you were talking about having to let go of the past you and mourning her, how did you 
show yourself love in that moment in those times and how do you still show yourself love now to be able to be where you are at achieve the goals you want to achieve and essentially just like grow as a person um so how did I show myself love wow it started out with not enough you know, and I was looking out for everybody else. And that's when I, I, I can't remember exactly who or where I heard, but it was just the reminders, the constant reminders. And it might have been just IG Reels or whatever, or YouTube, right. whatever the case is. But just hearing them remind me that, you know, one, you can, you hear the, the, you can't pour from an empty cup. You can't take care of everybody else and not take care of yourself. Right. Um, but it would be times when I'm helping other people with their businesses and, and throwing things out there. And it's like, why am I not doing this for myself again? Mm. And or like I'm doing this and I'm not getting paid for it. Um, and it's really what's interesting is, yes, I do want to get paid for what I do. Right. But it's so much that I love it that I will drop them gems regardless, you know, mm. um, just because I like to see people win. And so um one of the ways that, you know, what I, I kind of got tired of seeing me suffer or not have that love that I was given. So then I uh, also like, um, I mean, I had to just go within myself and kind of just break down and talk to God about it. Like, what is it, you know? And then it, what I, what I received from him is that you need more me mm. and, you and less of them. You need just lean on me and I will direct the path on where you need to go with this. Um, so then um, it also showed me that I don't need to fear the things that I was needing to lean into. I was learning to lean into God. And it seems like as I was lean, the more I lean into God and I'm still doing that, the more I lean into God, the less I fear the things that I felt overwhelmed with. Mm. Um, like the paperwork, seeing those stacks everywhere just felt so overwhelming. One of the things that I think about um, that I was told as a younger child, er, you know, every journey begins with a single stack. Mm -hmm. The only way you can eat an elephant is one bite at a time. So I had to really think about all of that. Something you said to me was to, you know, I think it was when we talked about the spider, um, planning what you have behind you. And yeah. so then I was thinking, okay, well, I know I love my to-do list and to-do lists are great for me to be able to check off and that I feel instant wins. I like to count my wins. Wednesday is my favorite day of the week because it's when, when, W-I-N-S-D-A-Y, Wednesday. Wednesday. So that, um, that entailed me to really just like go within myself. Okay. You know what, what is it? What, what's the process of this? And so I started doing the breakdown on that yeah. and that helped me. And so it's like, okay, well, um, reminding myself to give me grace because I give everybody else grace. I, I deserve the same grace too. So some would say I, it's a little too much, <laughs> but <laughs> we'll get to that in a little bit. But, um, that grace allowed me to really take one step at a time. And it's like, okay, well, if you just spread the papers out and get them in a category, okay, that's one good deal, you know? And I had to be okay with doing three wins. I mean, I, you know, making sure that I did my three things for the day. Yeah. Um, gosh, I, I wish I could remember the lady's name, but she also talked about having like five fails, giving yourself a fail account. Mm. Yeah, if you have five fails, you um you might have missed your workout that morning, and you missed you know um a phone call or two, or whatever. Well, right. you still have like three fails in your 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 account balance for the day. But what you can do is pick up wherever if it's eleven o'clock, pick up wherever your your schedule is at eleven o'clock, and like knock out the rest of the day. Right. And you put those one those, those fails if you can move them to the next day, move them to the next day. I'm stealing that. Baby. Okay, with yourself, and that was the, that was what I had to accept. If God keeps waking me up every morning, He loves me and He shows me that He still got purpose for me. And if He feels that way about me, I better feel that way about me as well. Okay, I gotta fulfill what He has for me. So that has been like motivation force on all of it. And loving myself is 
I remember when I when I loved myself so much that some people would be like, you conceited. And then I realized, like, when I replay those things, I wasn't conceited. Those people were just hating them because they didn't understand how to love themselves. Right. So when I say about shedding and getting rid of the old me, and my, that's part of that. Yeah. Getting rid of those old tapes that I was hearing that I thought, you know, I, I gave so much... Um, I gave so much to those credit to those people that were in my life and in my ear at that time. Love them dearly, but what they say and, and what works for them is not for me. Right. Right. I love that. I love that so much. That was so good. You be spilling gems, boy. Oh my goodness. This is good, boy. Somebody asked me where I come from. I came from heaven. Period. <laughs> God, did it hurt when you fell from heaven? because <laughs> no, I landed on God, boo. Oh. <laughs> Wait, let me walk out. <laughs> Bro, she's smooth with it. I'm not going to hold you. I've never heard that reply. I love that. I love that. I can't wait for a man to ask you that question. Boy, she's going to say, I fell on God. Yes. Awesome. So what would you say? I mean, we kind of heard it. But I want you to like legit go for it. What would you say are your milestones, aka wins, that you hit this far in your journey? Mm. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> so, and I, I, I don't want to limit it to just mental, emotional, spiritual. Yeah. Because yeah. It's on my physical journey. Mm-hmm. learn is a lot of the things that I thought I couldn't do I can really do um yeah so some, so I, well some of these weights that I was thinking like oh girl you gotta stay with the fives and the twos no. or maybe just do body weight but like an arm weight don't don't even put nothing on there <laughs> but <laughs> I was like oh I could get 15s with this oh hold yeah. up yeah. Um, you know even using the smith machine Mm. I didn't realize I could do that. And not saying that it, it, it might sound kind of ridiculous, but it, and it really is because why wouldn't I think that I could? I mean, it's a bar. On, <laughs> right. It's a, yeah, yeah. You get assistance. <laughs> You're okay. Yeah. It goes to say, that, that just goes to show you how, like, if you listen to the voices in your head, you will really think you can't do everything that you are able to do. Mm hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um, I feel like that was a win. Um, the, the nutrition piece of it, well, I was like, why do I have to log all of this? <laughs> Man, who cares? You know, I ate. <laughs> but just yeah. getting over those things, like those mindset situations, like those are my biggest, like I feel like those are my biggest wins because they're propelling my day now. Right. Knowing that log it even if it's not you know it wasn't the healthiest but did you eat you know we no, need to know. i told you i was like log everything good or bad um so just overcoming myself mm -hmm. myself out that's like been a huge win for me um developing the desire to work out and really not necessarily just limited to being in the house, but just making sure that I differentiate, you know, what I do at home and it, go across the hall and, and work out in this gym. Right. Um, and then explore the machines. Yeah. And my endurance. It's like, whoa, I could do this. I could really do this. Yeah. Um, I could be an IG fitness gal if I want to, you know. Um be on my page. <laughs> you know, stay tuned. I, I may, I don't know. We'll see how they go. We'll see what the Lord says. So, <laughs> if I get the post of a little workout. Hey, video. let me find out. Let oh, me God. find out. I mean, this is a win right here, being on this podcast with you, you know? Yeah. Um, definitely. Like staying in the cut and, and you know, big everybody else. Uh, I know what I do. And, you know, whether I get credit for it or not, you know, I know God, no I did my thing. <laughs> and, I, and I do too. So um, it's definitely helped me be more consistent with developing a routine. And I, even if it's not a consistent routine, I'm consistent with making sure I have a routine for the day. Yeah. And I, and I didn't start out with Initially, I'll just get up when I get up. I mean, you know, 
now I got a little sticky notes with this is today's day, you know, and I have a longer sheet that has like all of my brain dumped on there. Mm-hmm. And then I can choose and kind of navigate that. So just re entering life, so to speak, is like the overall huge win for me. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I'm so excited. Um for for a moment, speak to those ladies who like whenever they think about their fitness journey, they like feel overwhelmed, but they still wake up like not seeing what they like, not liking what they see in the morning. And but they know they need to get started. They know they like need to get their life together. Like, what would you say to that girl? Ma'am. <laughs> I would okay because this is what I would say like friend you know you're gonna want to look good in like two months the two months start right now Mm. right now and do something you are gonna be all the better for it your day is gonna be better Mm. your attitude is gonna be better yeah you're gonna be proud of yourself. So one of oh, here is my major win. On on my major, my thought on that is you're doing this for your future you. What you do right now is for your future you. And your future you is gonna love it. So what you decide to do in this moment, are you gonna be proud about it later on today? Or are you gonna be mad about it later on today? Mm. Proud about it, get up and do it. If you're gonna be mad about it, don't do it. But either which way, make a decision and roll with it. And whatever your decision is, be okay with it. And if you need to make another one later on, make another one later on. But get started. Because the clock is ticking and it ain't waiting on you. I promise. Okay. <laughs> it's not waiting on you, sis. Yeah. And I, I, I will like kind of go back a little bit and say the reason why I say all of that is because one of the wins that I did mention, which I should have given it a big um, spotlight, is that overcoming depression. Amen. And that was part of overcoming a depression. Yeah. Making sure that it, it was the small thoughts, the small decisions. And once again, I'll reiterate the incremental progress. Reminding yourself that every centimeter counts. I, I missed the row class on, on last Friday. However... I did stop by the the bridge and I walked for 15 minutes and it wasn't just a normal flat walk. I was on the inclines up and down for 15 minutes and I could feel it in my hamstrings. And I was like, this is exactly what I need to do something. I got to stay active every day. And I realized like, I can't take no days off. Yes, It's not going to get me where I want to be. Right. And you are your best asset. Okay. There's no shortcuts to this thing. And the only way somebody said that you, if you work out in the gym one day, that's just the one day. If you do it two days, this is two days. But if you do it a hundred days, man, you're going to see something. You can't get up every, you know, two days and be like, where's my inches? They still, no, they're not, <laughs> they not going nowhere. You know, right. and the one of the things that, um, you know, coaches help me to be okay with is even if I don't see any movement on the scale, do look at the other components, my energy level, my endurance. Um, I might have lost weight, you know, inches in my waist, um, not necessarily on the scale, which means that I'm probably picking up some muscle mass, you know, just compensating for whatever, you know, and if I'm working my bigger muscles, like my legs, of course, that's going to get bigger. Right. Um, but it's also going to help me, you know, like reduce my fat. So you just got to look at um, everything that you do and try to find a, a win in it. Find yourself a lining for sure. Right. Oh, I love that. I love that. And you, I'm so glad that you mentioned you overcoming depression because that's one thing that I feel like we as black women specifically don't speak enough about, especially as like it shows like in so many different ways but really just taking the time to acknowledge like it's okay that you're not okay but it's not okay to give up right and so making sure that you do what you can take it step by step like you said every centimeter counts um to get out the hole and uh real quick question then I got one more question and we'll hop off but 
would you say you did you see a light at the end of the tunnel when you started or did you not and you were just like let me just get up and do it um where were you at depression wise when you started that and like, how did it go from there? If you're looking to get rid of stubborn body fat and be confident in who God's created you to be, I wanna encourage you to sign up for my one-on-one -on -one Curvy Queen coaching program. This is where I help women not only look good on the outside, but feel good on the inside by creating a customized nutrition and workout plan, walking you through how to overcome insecurities and providing you the tools to make this a lifestyle. Three years ago, I walked past the mirror, got a glimpse of how chunky I got, and burst it into tears. I knew I was meant for more, and that day I decided to become the woman God created me to be, and you should too. So whether you need accountability to keep you going or a community to remind you that you're not alone, I encourage you to pause this video, click the link in the description below, and sign up and book a call. Mm, no, I didn't see a light at the end of the tunnel initially, and that's unfortunate, unfortunate, because not seeing the light at the end of the tunnel um, made me help me to see where I was and when you don't see the light you're usually at your bottom right so at that point it's only up from there you yeah. really can't go any further so that was kind of the fortunate piece of it the unfortunate piece was that I was there and I didn't really have to be there mm. because I mean to your point you said something you know <laughs> personally in our messages that I have all the tools and resources around me to do and be who God has called me to be. So I really had no excuse. It was just on me. Um, at that time though, I didn't want to share some of my personal struggles because I felt I was just, it was a lot of self-condemnation and I would just encourage um, my sisters out there um, and brothers, whoever's listening. Right. You know, even if you are feeling that despair and that self-condemnation, um, remember who you are. Remember who you've been. And because you've been that person and, and done those great things, you can do even more. You are even better than that. Because if you fall down, you know what it's like to get back up. And when you get back up, you always get back up and bounce <laughs> higher than you were before you you know, even went down the first time. So um, that's where I was when I first started. And it was like, they just don't understand. She doesn't understand what I'm going through. And yeah. it, even if they don't, or the people around you don't understand, you understand. Right. And you know that you can't stay here. Like if, if you're still getting up, if you're still breathing, you got something to do. Mm. That was the reminder. And yeah. even though it, it was incremental change, like I said before, the the small steps, and I was giving myself grace with that. It was like, okay, did you do something today to better yourself? Yeah. And it might have been, I got up and made my bed. I made sure I ate. Um, I made sure I bathed. I brushed my teeth or whatever. I mean, it was small things. And, and it just got to, I got to build it on that day by day. Yeah. A win is a win. And that's it. And so it, it, but it took that and we would have those calls and I would think like, man, I don't really have nothing big that they'd be like, oh my gosh, I did such a, such a, such a, such a day. And I'm like, girl, you know what? <laughs> I made sure to make enough food for tomorrow. Yeah. You know, like it would be little stuff like that. Or, you know, it got to a point where I was like, I did all my workouts this week, you know? Um, <laughs> Appreciate you not ever giving up on me and continuously pushing me and motivating me, you know, um, it, and, and it, the great thing about Coach G, I will say this to y'all, um, she's so sweet. Oh, did not like get out of her box with me like look I'm sick of you <laughs> she did not give me none of that like this time's when I know she should have and I think I might have just kind of tested and pushed it a little bit to try to see if she was gonna get me there or if I was, I was gonna get her there. and she no not ever you know what I'm saying and even when she was firm with me she was still super loving about it so I just want to put that out there for anybody who decides to sign up with Coach G and Kirby Queen Armor Fitness yeah the this is a real one. I'm so proud of her. Oh, so happy to have her as my coach. Um, you know, even I mean, when I had the struggle, you know, some some little time ago when I was just like, 
I can't even get on our check-in call because I'm super emotional. Mm -hmm. Um, I appreciate the grace and the the space given and during that time or whatever. Um, And the other thing I will say is like in conjunction with that is make sure you have positive people around you. Yeah. Thankfully and gratefully for me, I am a pretty positive person. So when I feel like I'm in a dark space, I kind of like, I cut people off. I won't say cut people off, but I do take space to like examine that. And so I do encourage people who are in the depression to start looking at yourself and try to examine like, where am I, how am I where I am right now? And what can I do to to get out of this? Mm -hmm. Those are ways that you start to like clear the path and see the light. And the, the more you do that and peel back those layers on yourself, give yourself grace to make the step in front of you just look and focus on the one step in front of you and then continue to do that and say okay you know what I did that today pat yourself on the back even if nobody else sees that it was it it might not be big to everybody else but it's big to you and that's all that matters is how you feel about you yeah feel good about you and what you got going on man do what you gotta do hey (laughs) coach was telling me like I gave myself a little bit too much grace I love her. But at that time, I needed that extra grace for myself because I had been so hard on myself before. And and I have been in therapy. I have been told to be kind to yourself. And so that's one of the things I will encourage anyone that is suffering from depression, um, managing through, you know, anxiety, be kind to yourself. Take a breath, breathe. It's okay to take space outside. It's okay to take space um, in silence. Yeah. Cut the TV off. Cut the right the the um the, the the social media streaming or or scrolling or whatever. Cut that just so that you can have space with yourself. Um, so that it, and it's gonna be uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable in your thoughts, but once you do that, if you journal, meditate, whatever your your outlet is that's outside of the TV, social media keeping yourself caught up with other people in their drama, being, be consumed with your own and just take it one step at a time. Yeah. That's all that, that's all that you need. You are all that you need. Um, I also encourage whatever your spiritual beliefs is to, to dive deeper into that. I'm Christian. So I'm always going to encourage you to, to, to see God. Right. And see what he has for you. And you'll be amazed. It seems like, that doesn't make sense. And once I talk to God, like, what are you going to tell me? But if you just sit still and listen, you will hear it and you'll see how things start to open up and fall into place. So. Right. Right. Oh, I love that. I ain't even, I ain't got nothing else to say. There's nothing else for me to say because bro didn't already drop the mic. She ain't already like preached to y'all and everything. Like, y'all are good. I think the only addition I would say is just like to emphasize on the grace moment is like one I think that's one thing like just as a coach in general and also in building a relationship with your coach whoever it is and also but in the relationship with yourself one never be afraid to advocate for yourself right like Ro made sure to advocate for herself and with that being said like at the end of the day like like how she said you know you more than anyone else right and so, like, I'm like, yeah, like, you giving yourself too much grace, but I'm not with Ro every single day. I'm not in her head all the time. Like, even when I'm with her, I'm not with her all day, right? It's for, like, a few hours at a time. Right. Um, and so there are going to be times where you have to advocate for yourself um, in those moments of, like, wanting to be by yourself and acknowledge yourself and take care of yourself. Like some of that does require setting boundaries to be able to do that for yourself and show yourself that level of love. So definitely um, make sure that you do that in that journey as you do get out of that. Um, But yeah, for anybody in there, bro, if you can't see the light, it's because you're at rock bottom. But all that means is that you got nowhere else to go, but up. Um, (laughs) Okay. And so all you can do is go up. And so definitely take that as encouragement. Um, I remember that you have the power to achieve anything that you want to achieve. You just got to tap into it. 
And this was a super duper juicy episode. Like, I like, I mean, I knew it was gonna be good, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is this is why we do this, y'all. I get the opportunity to talk to these girls every day. Um, but yeah, where would you say um the people can find you, contact you, all that great stuff? Um, you know. Plug. <laughs> okay, cool. So you can find me at uh, well on social media. I'm that's a Ray J two o six. Um, D S I R E J two o six and Ro King on Facebook. Um, R two K Consulting LLC dot com. Yep. Or you can find me at OCC, right there, 2400. <laughs> 121, say hi. 121, you're a bit. Catch me on the weekend serving. You're yeah. I will say this too. You know what? Make sure you you um find somebody that you're comfortable, a safe space to confide in and communicate, you know, some of your um your concerns, your 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 struggles with or whatever. I, I just know that that's been like super amazing for me to have community. And we didn't get to talk about that a, a lot, but community made such a difference in where I am today. Yeah. Um, it, it, even if your community is just you and one other person, you got to have somebody you can talk to. Yeah. And then once you do that, you start learning to have community in different areas of your life. And that is going to exponentially change the energy that you get, you know? Yeah. Tell somebody yeah. like, you know what? My pinky toe is hurting. Yeah. And they, they don't judge you about it. This yeah. be like, girl, <laughs> what kind of shoes you got on? <laughs> you know? We'll be on our weekly call. <laughs> Bang. That, that's that been a big deal. I just thought about that. I was like, man, you know what? I, I get to communicate with you regularly and I get to share some of the, the you know, like, girl, why am I sitting up looking at food channel stuff? <laughs> Hungry. And I know I can't eat this late, but, you know, I just need to get it off my chest. So just get it off your chest. Literally. Yeah. You're like, hey, I'm trying to be in that Chick-fil-A drive through Cool. <laughs> I'm trying to be that chick play drive through coach. Help me out. Help me out. But thank you so much, Ro, for being on this episode with me. You were definitely more than valuable in general, but especially to uh, this episode. So um, thank you again. I will see you on Saturday for our weekly coaching call. And uh, y'all, you have a great day. Y'all have a great day. Love y'all. Adios. Adios.